That's the fun part, you know. We don't always know each other on other shows. I mean, the three of us obviously know each other because we work every day on Bold and Beautiful together. But but to, to see Eric here, I didn't know Eric very well, but I know he must do good, really good work. And I've seen some of his stuff, and he does he does good work. The fun of it is that we are here rubbing elbows, and uh, we're in the same boat together. And uh, we can we can enjoy each other and celebrate each other in a way that uh, is very unique. And and anybody out there, uh, you know, actors who are watching us who belong to SAG after or whatever, and if you 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 get a chance to be on the soap and you get an audition, you take it. See if you can get the job because it's the best job in the world, and it's really it's fun. It's really wonderful to work with each other and to to settle in and be uh, an accomplished guy on uh, on daytime TV. It's wonderful. And I'm so excited to share with you uh, this wonderful chat with these wonderful people who I've, I think I've talked to all of you before. Um, nice to see you all again. Thanks for being here in my living room, I guess. That's where we're doing this. Um, Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much for yeah. having me. Yeah, let me introduce everybody. Um, first up, we got Scott Clifton, who plays Liam Spencer on The Bold and the Beautiful. Hey, Scott. Hi. How are you? I apologize. I, I uh, lost my voice, but it's not going to stop I'm talking. Okay. Very good. And sharing the screen today, which I think is an added bonus, is Torsten Kay, who plays Ridge Forrester on The Bold and the Beautiful, and John hey, McCook, who plays Eric Forrester on The Bold and the Beautiful. Hey, guys. Hi. Glad to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And yeah. last but not least, Eric Martzoff, who plays Brady Black on Days of Our Lives. Hi, Eric. Good evening, Jim. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Well, welcome, everybody, and congratulations on each of your nominations in this esteemed category. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the storylines and the scenes that brought about your nominations, as well as dig into some of the tricks of the trade since you've all been doing this for a while. Um, and we've got a lot of actors watching the panel who want to hear how you guys do your job. So we'll dig into that a little bit as well. Um, but first up, I want to ask just about submitting. I, we always hear about that. And I know you guys talk a lot about the scenes and the episodes and things. Is, is it tough for you guys to actually find those scenes or do those scenes? Or is it kind of a no brainer looking at your work? Um, Eric, I'll start with you. Is it, is it a challenge to kind of figure out what to submit? Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, considering, uh, you know, soaps never sleep. There, there's so much material. There's so many scenes that we do in a calendar year. Um, I'll, I'll usually go by my, my scene partner at the end of the day. If that scene partner will come up to me and maybe give me a little, you know, you, you might want to flag that, that, that group, that group of scenes. I'll, I'll go down and make a little note in my phone and just, you know, keep that one in mind. Um, but besides that, I, I love to go to the fans too. I love that. I think social media, that's a lovely tool. They'll, they'll let you know how you're doing, you know, they'll, they'll let me know if I did something special or not so special on a particular day. So, um, I, I really like to go to them for, for advice. And a lot of my reel okay. is, is fan predicted. Yeah. Okay. John, John, I want to ask you the same question because I was watching the scenes where we all thought we were saying goodbye to Eric. Thankfully, we did not really say goodbye to him. But that seemed like definitely material. But did, did you have a hard time kind of figuring out the scenes you wanted to submit? No, you know, no. And uh, yeah, the scenes, you know, we know when the scenes feel good at the end of the day. Scene partner, yes, that's very important, too. And usually it's him. But but it's often other people, too. <laughs> and when the material is good and it feels fulfilled, and it's, it makes you laugh and feel good at the end of the day. That was a good scene. So when we talk to other people on the show and the people upstairs and they, you know, what should I submit on quotes, uh, they have strong ideas about it. And I go with them. You know, I've seen these scenes. And I know which ones I like. But um, it's not about I want to submit that and I want to submit uh, this one over here. It's not about that. It's about doing good work all year long and being proud of it and and having people from the show submit uh, scenes that they feel are competitive, you know, which is not my, uh, that's not my objective to find a competitive show, a competitive scene. It's about having good scenes, you know, and uh, the show surprised that for me. So it's not, I didn't choose that. Okay. And, and Torsten, you know, you just won in December because the awards were a little later this past year. Are you feeling a little deja vu going through all this again? 
Yeah, no, it's, look, these are not my favorite things to do, but I, I, let me just, what John just said, he's right. You know, it's, it starts on the page. So if you think you have a scene that makes sense, if it doesn't make sense, that's on you. Um, and if it, if people like it, that means that, you know, you had a, a script that made sense and you made it work. So, but I, I always feel like somebody else needs to pick those scenes. I agree. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Scott, how about you? How do you feel? I'm going to ask it? Eric Braden to choose all my scenes next year. I think. I yeah. <laughs> Let's all do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I never, I, I never want to have to ask myself, what should I submit? Like it's, it's, uh, if I don't, if I have to ask myself that question, I'd rather just not submit. And uh, honestly, a, a lot of years it's me begging the show not to submit. And, and sometimes they, it's not a, I mean, it's a positive thing, right? They want us to submit. They want us to like try, you know, place our bets and try, you know, and enter the ring. But that was just way too many metaphors that it's, um, but I, I, I want to submit if there's a year that I know by the end of it, what, what I would submit. Right. I mean, if there was a, it, if there's a scene worth submitting, I, I know, I know what it was. it was. Oh yeah. It was when I did that. Oh, it's that time. It's, it's probably going to be that, that moment, you know, that, that I'm really proud of that meant something to me that I felt like worked that we got to play or what, you know, whatever it is that I value in those scenes. But um, I'm really, really wary of submitting because I think I should find something to submit that that makes me really uncomfortable can, can i say yeah. something real quick sorry for yeah. interrupting but first of all we we think you should, you should never submit that's us <laughs> you know what how about why do we have to do this anyway maybe there's a better way of doing this maybe the show should submit it's really weird to go through and go this is when i was really great and this is what i, I should know. get the award for. I know. It's, it's weird there's it a better is. way to do this it's totally uncomfortable the whole process yeah it is yeah right you're right I was good that day. I was good. You yeah. weren't, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you were good. well ho hopefully it won't make you uncomfortable if I ask what I wanted to find out from you guys. Um, Scott, what did you submit from this last year? Uh, the, I had um, I had some scenes with Annika Noel, which uh, we were both really proud of, and we worked a lot of uh, a lot on uh, on, on the day. Um, and they kind of, they, they didn't end up the way that they started and we kind of like created them there. It was, it was a really cool collaborative thing, but it's, it's a, uh, her character hope, uh, goes, we're married. Her character goes to, uh, to Rome, which they shot on location for this like fashion shoot thing. And she ends up, uh, having this, uh, sweet stolen kiss moment with, uh, her fashion designer, um, oh. works together and, um, my character thought about it and uh it's it's a it, she comes back home and and he confronts her and it's um i got to be uh i got to be kind of an asshole um and and it was it was, it was a very like it was a, almost like an interrogation scene and and the, the liam the guy i play is uh, he's hurt but he's angry and he's toying with her and he's totally disingenuous and at times he's almost emotionally abusive and gaslighting her and um i've never really gotten to do that and i really enjoyed that and she was so present and it's it just it felt um it, it all felt really good uh and and then i you know i got uh, some really nice feedback from people saying yeah you submit that one and i thought yeah okay yeah <laughs> okay i love it hey, eric how about you with uh with brady uh, Brady has this lovely, tumultuous historical relationship with Kristen Demera. You know, uh, you know, previously, you know, <clears throat> she dated his father in the '90s, and then all of a sudden they they put us together about a decade ago, and they're still at it. Now they have a daughter, and they're just two fly by the seat of your pants people that that act before they think make tons of adrenalized decisions and it's fun to watch. And Stacy Hyduk is just a, she's a ball of fire to work with. You never know where she's coming from. And sometimes that fireball is, is captured. So a lot of it is, is us going through our custodial issues with our daughter and just playing that, that cat and mouse game of, you know, I'm the better parent. You know, we're both completely, neither of us should be parents. And that's the fun of it. You know, trying to decide which two of these broken people are the best for her. 
So, I mean, it gets to a point where I, I stick a gun into her belly and I'm like, stop it. I mean, it's just, it's insanity. But if you're a parent, you can, it's pretty relatable. So I, I went with the relatable topic of that frustrating thing. Kids, kids can, uh, can, kids can make your world go topsy turvy. And that's, that's what yeah. I see basically just a montage of, of us going nuts together, essentially. Okay. Okay. And, and John, how about you? You know, it's hard to talk about storyline. Uh, uh, these, the, it's not so much storyline that, that that are the best scenes to submit. It's about emotional connection that we have. You know, it's like an acting class every day at work. We don't have enough rehearsal. We don't get to prepare enough. And, and we rehearse in our dressing room and we go out there and we shoot these scenes. And so we instantly grab for each other. We, we hold on to each other, our scene partners, and we, uh, we pray for an emotional connection to whatever we're doing, whatever the story is. Now, my story, you know, Eric was dying. He didn't want anybody to know. And then uh, he was afraid in a way that he didn't want anybody to know that either. And then he passes away. You know, and these are big stories. But the point was, it's not about he's afraid to die. It's about what's the emotional connection with his son and, and with his wife? What's the connection with his children and his grandkids? These are the emotional things we have to grab onto. So it's not about the storyline as much as it is how much can I, how much emotion can can the two of us grab together in, in, our, in our two minutes together today on the set. And that's what we do. And that's what it feels like. It's like the best acting class anybody could ever have. It's a, you don't have a lot of preparation. You have to do your work, look at the script, make it better and connect with your partner. And that's what we do. And then we, we laugh and it's, it's joyful. And then we go home and we come back tomorrow and we do it tomorrow. So what a joy. Yeah. Torsten, were there was some of your scenes submitted? Were they ones with Mr. McCook here? Well, you just heard them, so they have to be with him, right? <laughs> um, I, look, I, what he just said made a lot of sense to me, so I will just second that, because that was really nice. Okay, okay. Um, and somebody touched on the just keeping it fresh for you guys. You, you were playing these roles for a long time, and all the scenes you talked about, I watched, and I've seen a lot of scenes with your scene partners, but these scenes, like, they popped. They were... They, they were really exciting to watch because I could tell you guys were finding new layers or finding something different to kind of bring to the set or bring to your character. How do you do that for yourself as actors? Since we have a lot of actors watching, how do you keep it fresh for yourself? Especially, you know, you guys have an advantage of playing these roles for a long time. Um, John, let me, let me ask you that question. Uh, you've been playing Eric for, for a minute. Um, how do you keep it fresh for yourself every day? Well, uh, I don't always, I don't always. And sometimes I look at the script and I go, what's fresh about this? You know, uh, it's hard. And so I, I tell the young actors and I tell uh, some of the old actors and I, I, I tell the other actors, dialogue on these shows. Dialogue is like wardrobe. Dialogue is not always what the scene is about. The scene is about the emotional connection with each other. So... We have to uh, within the front, within the framework of our wardrobe and the and the and the uh, and the set design and 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 what we're wearing and where we're standing. Within all that is the emotional challenge, and so um, that's what we have to do, and that's how we keep it fresh. And if you just have to say this, I've said this last Thursday, and I'm saying it again, and you go, yeah, you're on a soap opera. That's your job. So how do you make that new and fresh? So you have to grab each other emotionally and find a new way to say the same thing, to tell the story again. I mean, soap operas are like comic strips. They're like the old Brenda Starr and the old comic strips, five, uh, five frames a day. And you read that and then you have to see what comes the next day. Well, a lot of it's repetitive and you have to uh, make it come alive. Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to add anything to how you've done it all these years? I want to, I want to say something to that, if I may. Um, I think all you can do as an actor, young or old, is be present and maybe not make decisions in your bathroom the night before, you know, what look is the best and makes you look the coolest, but just be present and uh, get lost for a minute. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad yeah. Torsten, I'm glad he said that because, you know, we get, 
in this industry, in this genre, we get a lot of crap for, you know, it's just, it's just, it's artwork. It's just how you look. It's pretty people. It's, it's not just pretty people. There's, there's some people on these shows doing some really good work. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of these guys work and, and a lot of people out there doing it right now. It's, it's hard. Uh, I think experience, honestly, it help, helps, helps me a lot. I, I had a kid when I was on passions, but I didn't, I didn't have a real kid. So I didn't really understand what was going on. But now that I'm actually a father, I now have a kid that's 18 on the show. Uh, I'm really tapped in to what's going on. I feel like what I'm doing on stage is almost what I'm doing back in this, you know, bedroom. As soon as I get off this thing with you guys, I'm living this thing. But, but it's nice because I'm fine. You know, you experience it's just live life and bring that life to your scenario, whatever the heck you're doing. And it's so important. Yeah, it's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, anything you want to add there? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I think at the, at the root of the question is, uh, the premise that, uh, working on a soap opera can cultivate some really bad habits as an actor. Uh, it's just the way it's just how the sausage is made. Right. I mean, the, the repetition and the, um, the exposition and the dialogue and, and, you know, the, sometimes the camera angles and it can, it, it, it creates a kind of like, uh, complacency and staleness and it, it can, you know, the, 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 the goal is to try to, um, like you said, find something fresh. And I think, um, I don't know if you asked me that question 10 years ago, I, I, I would have said something like, yeah, it's tough because you, the, the soap operas never end, right? There's no first, second, third act. There's no like character arc where you can go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up there. And so I, you know, I can play this secret here and I can, you know, I can sort of like have this subtext here because it's going to pay off I, just like real life. You don't know where the hell it's going. Uh, and, and the head writer can change his or her mind any minute. And then suddenly you feel like you're left out to dry because you made this really strong choice that you feel really, really good about. And then it turns out that that that's not actually true at all. It was, it went in a completely different direction. And, um, and this, I, I think I'm speaking to Torsten's point about just uh, Torsten and John's point about just being present. And I, I kind of, I learned a, it took a long time to let go of that and go. Wait a minute, there's no reruns on this thing. It's just, it just keeps going and going and going. And like real life, we 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 move on, right? And so sometimes I find myself in fuck it mode right and i just want to try something i just want to play and um and if it doesn't work it's okay it doesn't work nobody's ever going to see it ever again and nobody cares that much anyway it's just we get to come and and play and and it's like john said it's the best acting class in the world for those reasons but it yeah. takes a long time to get our egos out of our asses <laughs> or at least it <laughs> Agreed. It took a long time for you to. I know that. <laughs> Scott, you touched on something there um, where you said your your answer to the question would have been different ten years ago. And I was curious about the start of your careers in this genre. Who who did you have on set that you could go to? Who was that person when you first joined either this show or your first show? And kind of could say like, can you help me like get my bearings in this? Because I know you guys shoot fast. It's a it's a very accelerated world. Um, Eric, who, who was that person for you when you first started either on days or even on passions? <laughs> I had, I had two guys that, that made an impression on me. The first was Ben masters, uh, when I joined passions and I was having trouble with the dialogue. Cause if you recall, passions was a little loony, right? We had some really <laughs> silly stuff going on and I wanted to be a serious actor. I'm like, this is just silly. And Benny put his, he put his hand on my shoulder. He said, son, don't read the lines, read your check. Uh, okay and <laughs> that was one piece of advice uh but that has nothing to do with acting the guy that the guy that really made a difference to me was john aniston the late john aniston he uh he made it look so easy he was a man of few words and our hallways haven't been the same since he since he's been gone but he uh again i was having one of those days i'm like john I just this with these words i mean what what are we saying what are we doing and he looked at me, he's like, well, it, it, it beats working for a living, doesn't it? And, you know, it, it's, he, he never, never thought of coming to that studio as work. And he looked forward to Monday morning every, every week of his life. So 
I, I, I really took that with me. And I, he's yeah. right. We are very fortunate to make a living and feed our families doing what we do. So um, I give up. I give that up to Johnny, Johnny Aniston. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, Mr. McCook, who was that person for you when you were just starting out? Well, Eric's right about that. That's a great way to worry the family. I'm mean, an actor in this, in this world. Um, um, when I first did Young and Restless, it was live on tape and it was years ago and I came out of theater and I was from theater in Las Vegas and all these different places. And I looked down on soap operas. I thought they were, uh, well, I looked down on them, like people still do sometimes. And uh, I got in there and I went, wait a minute, this is hard. We're going to do it one time and we're going to shoot it live on tape and that's it. And uh, my skill as an actor in in musical theater worked all right because I had to sing in a girl's ear and dance with her and say wonderful things to her. And then I went, oh, my goodness, this is hard. And... uh, and any good actor can do a soap. I, there wasn't somebody there who was older who took me under his arm and said, here's what you do, my boy. Uh, nobody said that to me. Um, that's why I try to do it now. Um, but nobody pays attention to me anymore. But, but, but in fact, uh, um, learning, you learn very fast to see yourself on camera. You see yourself uh, being good and you go, yeah, that was great. And you see yourself bad and then you learn. That's when you learn, you go, oh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to not try to be emotional. I'm going to be emotional. And I'm, if I can't, I'm just going to do the scene. And, and uh, I didn't have one person who guided me. It was uh, everybody who was doing the job. It was the camera guys and, and the people on sound. And, and it was the, the directors and the producers. It was all the other actors, everybody making sure they did the work every day. And that was because it was live on tape. And that was exciting. And so now it's different now. And now we have people, uh, it's, it's quieter and it's not quite so manic, but it's still very demanding. And, uh, and, and so it's good to have somebody who can say, don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. Don't worry about the lines. Do the emotion. Yeah. Who hey, was that for you when you were just getting started? You asking me? Yes. Oh. Yes, sir. You had nobody. That explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, does. Um, it really does. <laughs> Bob Woods, hands down. If, oh, if you guys, he uh, he did two tours in Vietnam, a great actor, but I think it just kind of put a lot of things in perspective. And he always had a way of um, calming things down when they, when they got a little heated on set. And it was it's good. Not that I learned from him, but I, I saw that it's possible. Yeah. Okay. And Scott, I'll come to you. Uh, I think I got really lucky. Um, I started on General Hospital. It, it was, I had just turned 18, I think. And and um, General Hospital is interesting because you've got, I was a quarter main, right? I got cast as a quarter main, which is this like big, hilarious family and all these bold personalities. And then, and then you know, the other half of the show is, Sonny Corinthos and Jason and they're like these like very you know the mobsters and and I played Jane Elliott's uh son and I remember I mean I, it was like two totally different almost diametrically opposed schools of thought right like for for Maurice and and Burton the cardinal sin uh, as an actor was being inauthentic you know I don't care what you do just don't be inauthentic be grounded and real for jane elliott and tony geary the cardinal sin was being boring for god's sake whatever you do i don't care just be interesting win the crowd right that's what we're, we're here to entertain fucking entertain uh and i kind of feel like i'm still looking for the balance there i i don't uh you know i i the answer has got to be both, right? But um, maybe there's something entertaining about being authentic, and maybe there's something authentic about being entertaining. It's uh, it's it's always been a riddle to me, but I I really appreciated having uh, those two thoughts in my head at once. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> um, all of you have had storylines that are very heavy. I've I've watched them. 
what what's your tact for not taking it home with you? How do you because a lot of actors want to know that because it's if you get so involved with your character and so into them, how do you leave it on set so you can go home and live your life? Or is that just nearly impossible to do? Does anybody have advice or just your own experience with that? And I don't think there's any way to leave leave that at work. Not all of it. I think if if it means anything, it's going to come with you. Uh, maybe there's a way to find a pocket for it when you walk through the door, but I don't think it ever goes away, does it, John? No, it's right. It's right. I I, I work really hard at trying to keep my my job and and my home separate. Uh, but but <laughs> I don't succeed at that all the time. But um, driving home in the car, I can I can decompress and think I did a good you know, Today was a good day. I did a good job or it didn't happen today. It wasn't that good. But I can get it over with in the car. By the time I get home, I want to be home with my family. And uh, and I think that's a really important part of being on a soap opera. We have to remember you know, when young, young actors come on the show or other actors, they say, it's like a family here. This is so great. It's a family. And my thing is always, no, this is not your family. You have a family. This is your job. It seems like a family because we're close and we love each other and we depend on each other so much for our work. But it's not your family. It's your work. And it's you need to treat it that way and they embrace it that way. It doesn't take away from it. It's a thing to embrace. But so I I don't take it home with me that much. I really don't. Okay. Eric, I, I feel like we've talked about this before because I know we, when Brady was in really dark places, we had talked. W were those days easy to leave that stuff at home or is that a challenge? Yeah, no, I I, I, I like John's John's philosophy. I've, I've adhered to that as well. I mean, I was exhausted. There, there's... There's storylines that just take it out of you. And when Brady was off the wagon for a couple of years and at the intervention, and he was deep into his addiction. I would come home and my wife would just look at me. <laughs> she was like, are, you, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I just, but I, like Torsten said, you, you can't just take it and, and set it down like a bag of bricks. You can't, Cause you need it for the next day too. Six yes. in the morning, like you are on the floor, you're deep in your addiction, you're screaming at the people that you love. Like you kind of have to keep it with you a little bit, but I don't know if you have a supportive, wonderful family. I think that's one of the reasons why when we happen to win one of these trophies, the first people we should thank is our families because they are our escapism. We, we create the escapism, um, but when we go home, I look at my kids and I dive into their worlds and my wife's world and I get to escape, you know? Yeah. So I think, yeah, I, I didn't really think about that until just now, but I, I, I like the way that came out. That makes sense to me. They're, my yeah. family's my escapism from my job sometimes. Uh, I like that. Scott, how about you? Uh, God, listening to some of the other responses, my, um, my imposter syndrome is, is <laughs> through the roof right now. Um, <laughs> I don't, uh, I mean, I, I don't think I ever have a problem uh, taking work home with me, like ever. Uh, I don't, and it's not even that when I leave work, I leave it at work. I, I leave it there after cut. Uh, I, uh, I, it's, and this is maybe this is a me thing. I, it's really important to me to be able to do a scene, even if I'm, I'm angry or I'm yelling or I'm crying or, or whatever to, to, you know, pick your, you know, intense human emotion. And when it's over, um, it's over. I, I don't want to, um, I don't need to linger there any longer than I have to. And that's, I guess that just, that's what works for me, but I'm, you you can trick your body into feeling all kinds of different feelings, you know, and you can connect and try to be as real as you can. And, but it's uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's um, we're pretending it's play. play uh, pretend. and, um, yeah. It's play. He's right. It's play. You know, if play you time. don't remember how much fun this is, it's too hard. It's way too hard. So there's joy in this. And and I know we all know that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We all know that. And the joy is how much it hurts 
or how much uh, we were able to convince, uh, to go to do. Help me with this. I can't do this. <clears throat> I don't know what he's trying to say because he always does this stuff. Yeah, but I do think, and I, I want to want to ask both of you guys at the bottom, um, bottom for us. I don't know that your body knows the difference if you're pretending or not. And I think that's why sometimes you walk away from something. I still think about stuff that I did 30 years ago because I didn't do it right. So some things you hold on to and your body holds on to, whether you want to or not. I don't know if it's as easy as saying you're just going to leave it on the floor, Scott. I don't know. Maybe it is. Mm. I, I actually have to thank Eric for what he said because uh, you want to thank your family first. And when I win the Emmy this year, I'll thank my family first. I promise. Yes. <laughs> John, I'll, I'll thank your family. Uh, there just you thank go. each other's families. Yeah. So sweet, I love that. <laughs> so I love sweet. it. Um, let, let me ask you guys, um, what, was, what was the job that got you your SAG card? I don't know if it was in this genre or was it something else? Um, what got you that SAG card, that first job? Uh, Eric, do you remember what it is? I was hoping you'd come to me last because I really got to oh, think. Okay. <laughs> I can come back to you. I can come back to you. Let me think about it. Scott, Scott, you're shaking your head too. Are you? I don't think I remember. You know what it might have been? Ugh. A Ugh. Doritos commercial. Uh, no, I wish. I wish it was a national commercial. <laughs> that would have been great. I think it was uh, every, every young actor was doing this at the time. It was MTV's Undressed. Do you remember that yeah. show? It was, sure. like, it was yeah. undressed. It was the most gratuitous, uh, just people being uh, debaucherous. But uh, yeah, I think that might be it. Scotty, okay, wow, well, <laughs> debaucherous, very permissive. Um, John and Torsten, do you remember what what that job was? I, I got my first. Uh, well, I got my first job was it was equity. I got my equity card being in the chorus as a singer in, in stock and, and doing a musical theater. My first SAG job was when I was under contract. Warner Brothers signed me to contract and I had one line on, on a Mr. Roberts uh, TV series. And I had uh, played a sailor and, and uh, it was stupid uh, sitcom thing. But that was on camera on the back lot at, at Warner Brothers. That was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing well. Go ahead. Torsten, do you remember? I, wanna, um, I, I don't know that I remember. Some movie of the week, probably. Do they still do Taft Hartley's? Is that still a thing? Where you get to do one know. job where you don't uh, have to pay yeah. money to join the union? Um, oh, I, I think know. they do. The first one's a free Yeah, <laughs> yeah so oh, I, okay. I think that was some movie of the week in, uh, in Utah. I don't okay. know what it was called. It was really good. I was amazing at it. <laughs> he had to be out of state to do that. Had to, yeah. That was, that was yeah. Eric, I love the John. Well, mind? I knew I liked John because uh, I, well, I got my equity card first on the, uh, well, I was on the bus and truck tour of uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream. Oh, yeah, right. And then the show went equity and they fired everyone except myself and two other cast members. Got my card from that. Moved to L.A. with uh, one of the dancers from that show who happens to now be my wife and the, the mother of my two boys. Um, but I think it was I think it was Passions, actually. I was, okay. I was a theater guy as well, and I was at Universal Studios doing Green Goblin in a stunt show. And my Motorola flip phone went off and said, you're the new Ethan Crane on Passions and you're on set tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, like, I, I'm pretty sure that was my first TV. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay. That is very cool. Wow. Um, we've got a few more minutes here. I want to ask you guys, so you've all done the award thing before. Do you write your speech? Do you wing it? What I hear different responses from people. Do you normally prepare really well or is it more like, I'll just say what, say what I say. Scott, I'll start with you. Um, I, uh, I, uh, this is mortifying. I, 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 I <laughs> The, the experience to me, I mean, the, this part where we're all just nominated and it, we, we're not like at the ceremony yet. And there's and nobody's like telling us like you're going to win and or this and, and and we just get to like enjoy each other. I love this part. Um, I I don't think I've had a year at the Emmys that wasn't traumatic for me. <laughs> I mean, you even winning. I, I you uh, and it's. 
obviously it's the it's such an honor right I, but um god i i have so much anxiety about how to, how to navigate that every single year I, I i try okay that that was a disaster let's um try something else and um yeah i uh, i've i've kind of uh i think the last the last one i i just said okay who who do i who do i just feel the most grateful for like the three people that i just feel the most gratitude for and i think i i said something to that effect but okay. oh oh god i oh i hate it so much i'm so grateful but i hate it so much <laughs> um john and torsen I'll, I'll go to you next do you, do you write your speech do you just wing it uh, he doesn't write anything and and he and anything that's written he doesn't pay any attention to anyway that's so, so that's, that's not true that's, that's a bitterness i just don't show up so i don't have to have a speech. that's true go ahead no there's not there's nothing about writing a script it's about yeah yeah if i were to win that would be great you know but i'm just so uh I'm just so happy to be an old actor and have a good job. You know, that's what I love. And I, I love that for 40 years, I've been in daytime television uh, uh, from this show and, and, and another. Uh, I have no problem uh, going up and saying, this is a great day for me. Thanks very much. And to bring a bartender to table six. That's all I want. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Get to that place. Yeah. I like that. I want to be at good. that table. I want to be at that table. Yeah. Eric, how about you? Will you have a speech ready on June seventh, or? Oh, oh no, no, it's no. It's my response is a perfect mix of what Scott and John just said. Uh, <laughs> my favorite part of this whole process is now. Is from the day you find out you're nominated up until the ceremony. Then it's just, hey man, what happens happens. And but this is my favorite time right now. And I will. I shot from the hip the last time I won the little thing, and I'm, I'm going to shoot from the hip this time. My favorite speeches are the ones that were just, you know, from the heart, not from a note card. Just, just say what you, you know. You might say some crazy, stupid shit, but you might say some really nice, poignant, beautiful stuff too. So who knows when it comes from the gut? I, that's the way I like to play it. Sure. That's the fun part, you know. We don't always know each other on other shows. I mean, the three of us obviously know each other because we work every day on Bold and Beautiful together. But but to, to see Eric here, I didn't know Eric very well, but I know he must do good, really good work. And I've seen some of his stuff, and he does, he does good work. The fun of it is that we are here rubbing elbows, and uh, we're in the same boat together. And uh, we, can, we can enjoy each other and celebrate each other in a way that uh, is very unique. And, and anybody out there uh, you know, actors who are watching us who belong to SAG after or whatever. And if you, you, you get a chance to be on the soap and you get an audition, you take it. See if you can get the job because it's the best job in the world. And it's, it's really hard. fun. It's really wonderful to work with each other and to, to settle in and be uh, an accomplished guy on, uh, on daytime TV. It's wonderful. Okay. Well, I hope on June seventh you guys all get to toast and you know raise a glass to each of you. Congratulations on your nominations and thanks for chatting with me today. Um, for those of you watching, I'm going to go do this again with the actresses in this category. So we're going to do some more chatting about all this stuff. So you guys, thanks so much. It was a really fun conversation. I appreciate it. Thanks, You're welcome. Thank you. you. Cheers, Steve. All right.